Hello! This time, we will discuss one of the Form 4 poems, which is The Living Photograph. In this video, we will first look at the meaning of important words, followed by poem recitation, before we will analyze the poem stanza by stanza. Next, we will have an in-depth analysis. And we will go beyond that with some extra analysis before we summarize the whole poem and highlight the lessons that we can learn from the poem. This is the list of important words from this poem. The first one is straight back, pleated, barn, sharp, hunch, awful, unknown, unthinkable, and crinkled. Straight back. Straight back is an adjective to describe a person. It means to have a straight back, not hunch. In Bahasa Melayu, we say belakang yang lurus, tidak bongkok. Look at the picture, right? The one on the right with the green tick, right? That one has, that woman has a straight back. Well, the one on the left, she looks a bit hunch. Pleated. Synonyms for pleated are folded or creased. In BM, it is berlipat. You can look at the picture. Can you imagine berlipat? Right? Usually, you will see this in your clothing or maybe uh, your curtain at home. Next is bun. Bun is a hairstyle that looks like a bun. Bun is roti, roti bun, you know right? Uh, roti bun, gardenia that's ringgit lima sen, uh, that one, right? So in BM, it is sejenis ikatan rambut berbentuk sanggol. Next is sharp, right? Sharp is tajam or berwaspada. The synonyms are alert or quick to respond. Next one is hunch. This is the opposite of straight back. So hunch in Bahasa Melayu is bongko. Or the synonyms in English are bent or deformed. Next is awful. Awful means terrible or unpleasant. In BM, it is teruk, dahsyat. Mengerikan. Next is unknown. Unknown means yang tidak diketahui atau penuh misteri. In English, it is mysterious or unfamiliar. Unthinkable, meaning you cannot think about it. So if you cannot think about something, it is unimaginable or it is unbelievable, meaning it is sukar untuk dibayangkan. And here comes the last one, crinkled. Crinkled means wrinkled, crease or wizened. In BM, it means berkedut. Are you ready for poem recitation? You may quietly Follow me as I recite the poem, The Living Photograph. My small grandmother is tall there. Straight back, white broderie, English shirt, pleated skirt, flat shoes, grey bun, a kind old smile round her eyes. Her big hand holds mine, white hand in black hand. Her sharp blue eyes look her own death in the eye. It was true after all, that look. My tall grandmother 
became small. Her back round and hunched. Her soup forgot to boil. She went to the awful place, grandmother's go. Somewhere unknown, unthinkable. But there she is still. In the photo, with me at three. The crinkled smile is still living, breathing. Okay, let's begin our analysis for stanza one. This stanza is a bit confusing because the points are all over the place. So we should not uh, analyze line by line. However, let's look at the words that I have highlighted. You will notice that there are words highlighted in blue and some words are highlighted in green. So the word small, tall, straight back, grey bun, old smile. These words describe the grandmother's physical appearance. So you see, straight back, grey bun, right? Kelabu, rambut sanggul berwarna kelabu. And also the word old smile there, old. So what does this describe about the physical appearance of the grandmother? Yes, the grandmother was old. That's all we know for now. So what about the green words? White broadery and glazed shirt, pleated skirt. Flat shoes. Those are attire, isn't it? Right. So the green words describes the grandmother's attire or apparel. Okay. Apparel means uh, attire or pakaian. Now, let us see what the grandmother's attires look like. First, look at this. What is this? Yes, this is white broadery and glazed shirt. I'm sure girls are pretty familiar with this, but boys might not might not be familiar with this. Honestly, I am not familiar with this as well. I have to look up the internet for this. And this is pleated skirt, right? An example. So, what is broadery and glaze? How is it different from any other uh, shirt? Well, you can look at the meaning, the translation as well. But, in short, broadery refers to embroidery or sulaman in Bahasa Melayu. And anglaise actually refers to English or from England. So, Broderie Anglaise is this pattern. Okay, uh, pattern Sulaman yang popular, which was popular, that uh, came from England. And this is an example of flat shoes. Who normally wear flat shoes? Normally, young people don't really wear flat shoes if they want to look stylish or gorgeous they would choose high heels however all people normally do not wear high heels why because they have back problem so flat shoes are for people who want to feel comfortable and it's suitable for people with back problems remember grandma is not young so she needs a flat she needs flat shoes. So how do we describe someone who wears a white angry, a white, white broadery anglaise shirt, pleated skirt and flat shoes? Well, she must look posh and elegant, stylish. Now let's continue with our analysis. Her big hand holds mine. Okay, her here refers to the grandmother. Mine refers to the persona's hand. So, grandmother's 
hand is described as big, which tells us that a grandmother must be bigger than the persona. Okay, so big hand shows physical difference. So here we can tell that the grandmother was bigger than, than the persona. Hence, she looked tall to the persona. Remember the first line of this poem? My small grandmother looks tall there. So, the grandmother looks tall. So, grandmother is bigger than the persona. So, that's why grandmother looks taller. So, well, we will talk more about small and tall in extra analysis later. Next, we look at this line. White hand in black hand. Hmm, what does it tell us? It shows racial difference. Meaning, ada perbezaan bangsa. Okay, one of them has white skin. So, probably a Caucasian or a pute. Alright, and the other one has black skin. So, probably has African origin. Well, we will talk more about racial difference in extra analysis. So, we look at the last line in stanza 1. Her sharp blue eyes look her own death in the eye. So, sharp earlier, we learned that it means tajam or alert, right? So, sharp blue eyes. So, it tells us that the grandmother has blue eyes. Who normally has blue eyes? Well, the grandmother is probably the white person. However, this is not, uh, this is not the only possible answer. Because black people can also have blue eyes. If you don't believe me, you can search on Google you will find that black people can have natural blue eyes and they look so beautiful, right? Well, again, we will talk more about racial difference in extra analysis. So, we see here, her sharp blue eyes look her own death in the eye. So, someone who has sharp eyes, meaning they are always aware of their surroundings. So, look someone in the eye, right? This expression in English, English means to look directly at someone without showing embarrassment, fear, or shame. In other words, when you are able to look at someone straight in their eye, it means that you are brave. So, the grandmother was not afraid of death. Earlier, we know that she was old. But if you are not afraid of death, it means that you are, you must be healthy. So, grandmother, even though she was old, but she was healthy. So, to summarize stanza 1, the persona remembers the grandmother when he or she looks at an old photograph. Remember, we do not know whether the persona is a boy or a girl because it was never mentioned in the poem. Next, the grandmother was old but still healthy and she also looked elegant, posh and stylish. And we also know that the persona and the grandmother are from different races. Now, let's look at stanza 2. The first line sounds like this. It was true, after all, that look. So, what is true? Well, the, the persona confesses that whatever he or she has seen and will describe is true. So, what is it? Right? It is 
what the grandmother looks like when she was dying. The look. How she looked like. We will look at other lines. Okay, let's see. The second line, my tall grandmother became small. This line shows the opposite of what is described in stanza 1. Remember, in stanza 1, we found my small grandmother is tall there. So, why is it opposite? We will look at the answer in extra analysis later. We look at the next lines. Her back round and hunch, her soup forgot to boil. Okay, the line in blue refers or describes the grandmother's physical appearance. So you see there, uh, the grandmother has round back, belakang yang dah uh, membulat, and hunch, membongkok. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the grandmother was very old and sickly. In fact, people who are uh, hunch, you know, old people who are hunch are normally close to death. Right, close to dying. And her soup forgot to boil describes the grandmother's mental condition. Right? So, what does it tell us? Right? She put her soup, you know, she wanted to cook soup, but then she forgot to turn on the fire. So, of course, the soup will not boil. So, it means that she begins to lose uh, her ability to remember, right? She becomes forgetful or senile, okay? Senile means nyanyok. If the earlier lines describe how old and sickly the grandmother was, the last two lines describe that the grandmother finally passed away. She died. Right, so the words in green we have awful, unknown, and unthinkable. Right, these three words is used to describe death. Okay, so death is awful, the road, and death is also unknown. We do not know about death, and it is unthinkable. We cannot imagine what death is like. Right? And then we have the awful place grandmothers go. So the place grandmothers go in this line refers to the hereafter or death. Right? It refers to the death itself. So why, why did the persona describe death as the place grandmothers go? Well, it is because grandmothers, okay, grandmothers are old. And old people normally die. Okay? Of course, young people also die. But then, you must remember, this persona may not be an adult. Right? Why I said so? Later, we will see. Alright? But to the persona, old people die. And when they die, they go to the same place. So that's why the place grandmothers go refer to death. Now, let's look at stanza 2 summary. The persona recalled memories of the grandmother in the past. The grandmother was no longer healthy. Remember earlier in stanza 1, grandmother was old, but she was healthy. But now, she was frail and senile. Okay, frail means lemah. Remember in stanza 1, the grandmother looked death in the eye. She was not afraid of death. But now, she is frail and senile. And finally, the grandmother passed away. Now, let's look at the last stanza. Okay, we look at the first line first. But there she is still. Where is there? 
Remember in stanza 1 earlier, my small grandmother is tall there, right? So here, we find the word there again. So where is there? There refers to the photograph. So there meaning in the photograph, right? Uh, the picture of the grandmother, okay? In the photo, see that is the answer, in the photo. But there she is still in the photo with me at 3. So we know here, we now know that the persona in the photograph, he or she was 3 years old. Okay, so 3 here, at 3 here, refers to the age of the persona when the photo was taken. And let's look at the last line of stanza 3. The crinkled smile is still living, breathing. Okay, this line tells us, to the persona, the grandmother is still alive even though she has passed away. Remember earlier in stanza 2, grandmother finally passed away, right? So even though grandmother is dead, but to the persona, the grandmother is always alive. You know, she is in the picture and to the persona, it feels like the grandmother is still alive. So let's summarize stanza 3. Okay, even though the grandmother has passed away, she is still alive to the persona. It is because the photograph they took together will always remind the persona of the grandmother. Are you ready for an in-depth analysis of this poem? Well, I hope you are ready because I will start now. Alright, this poem is interesting because the poet plays with time using different tenses. Let's look. Right? In stanza 1, the, uh, the poet used present tense, while in stanza 2, the poet used past tense. And then in stanza 3 again, the persona, oh sorry, the poet used present tense. Why did the poet use different, different tenses in this poem? Hmm, I will explain to you soon. Right, so let's look back at the stanzas in case you did not pay attention earlier. Right, so stanza 1, my small grandmother is tall there. You see, there, is, is present tense. And then straight back, white broderie English shirt, pleated skirt, fat shoes, grey bun, a kind old smile on her eyes. Her big hand holds mine. So you see, again, in this stanza, it is present tense. White hand in black hand, her sharp blue eyes look her own death in the eye. So you see, present tense in stanza 1. Let's look at stanza 2. It was true after all. Okay, past ten. My tall grandmother became small. Again, past ten. Her back round and hunch, her soup forgot to boil. Okay, forgot is past ten for forget. She went to the awful place grandmothers go. When is the past tense for go? Okay, now let's look at stanza three. So in stanza 3, again, you see here, but there she is still. Okay, back to present tense. In the photo with me at 3, the crinkled smile is still living, breathing. So you see, stanza 1, present tense. Stanza 2, past tense. And stanza 3, again, present tense. So why? Because by using different tenses, the poet created flash flashback effect for the readers. Remember I said that this poem is, in, is interesting? Because reading this poem is like reading a short story. You don't believe me? Let's see. So, to better understand this poem, let's put you 
in the persona's shoes. Right? So you will be the persona. Are you ready? Okay, if you're ready, now imagine this. Right? You are going through some of your old stuffs and then you found an old photo album. What would you normally do? Yes, normally you would browse through the photo album, don't you? Right, you will uh, you will flip through page by page. And then you found an old photo of your late grandma. What would you do? Yes, you will look at it. Not just look at it, you will look at the details. You will look at what the grandma wears, how she looks like, how beautiful she looks. Right. So, let's say this is the old photograph. Okay. So, it is a photo of you when you were little. You do not remember this moment with your grandma. Right. You remember your grandma, but this is not the grandma you know. Right? Not the grandma that you remember. So you will look at the details. You will look at the, you know, how she looks like, how, you know, how she wears her attire, what kind of attire she wears, you know, how beautiful she looks. Right? So, again, as I said, you have memories with her. So, this photo is something that you do not remember, but you have memories with your grandma. So, this is when you will remember the memories you have. This is the time for flashback. Say, this is the image of the grandma in your memory. In your memory, your grandmother seemed like a different person. Not the same as the one in the photo you found in photo album earlier. Right. In the photo album earlier, she looked uh, much younger. She looks happier, healthier. But the one in your memory is probably a grandma who is weak, senile. In fact, you might have uh, witnessed her death. Right. Do you like the memory of your grand of your dying grandma? Well, I'm sure nobody likes memory of someone who is dead. Especially if you have witnessed that they died when they were dying. So, if you do not like this memory, you want to forget it. So how? How would you do that? Okay, you will snap out of your memory and come back to the present. So you want to forget the flashback. You want to forget the memory just now. So you come back to reality. And you will look back at the old photograph you found. Yes, this photograph. Why would you prefer to look at this photograph compared to the memory you have earlier? It's simple, actually, because you and grandma look happy in the photograph. You know, this is the kind of memory that you want to preserve, that you want to keep with yourself, right? Imagine uh, you have two memories of the same person, right? One, the person is happy, healthy, and, you know, uh, you look at them you feel happy you feel you feel good and the other memory is of that person the same person looks sickly you know always sick and dying and probably you witness them dying as well which memory do you prefer obviously you prefer the memory when that person is healthier isn't it so that's why you will look at this photo, you prefer this photo, you prefer this memory. It is because even though grandma has passed away, she still looks alive in the photograph. That is the kind of memory 
you want to have of your grandmother so this whole um this whole situation i put you through is actually an analogy for this poem you know the story behind this poem earlier i showed you that the use of different tenses created the flashback effect in the poem another reason of using different tenses is to let us compare the changes undergone by the grandmother so let's see okay so there are three different uh, changes grandmother went through okay physical and how she looks and also her condition so in stanza one we can see that the grandmother was old but still healthy okay straight back gray bun remember but then in stanza two her back became round and hunched so in stanza one she was old but now she was getting very old okay so in stanza one she looked elegant posh and stylish remember white broadery angler shirt pleated skirt flat shoes but in stanza two it was not mentioned how she looks like but can't we guess you know if someone is getting very old you know do they still look elegant and stylish normally no right they will look like grandmas isn't it right and the condition in sense of one she was not afraid of death okay she was old but she was healthy okay but in sense of two she finally became senile we are finally here at this extra analysis section first we will talk about small versus tall there are two explanations so first let's look at the first explanation first i want you to look at these pictures right picture number one and picture number two if we look closely the one on the left is like the is like what grandmother would look like would look like in stanza one right she is healthy she has straight back right but in uh, in the second picture this is how the grandmother would look like in stanza two she have round back and it's hunch so think about health okay think about health let's say you have a friend or family member when that person is healthy do they look like picture number one or do they look at the or do they look like picture number two i'm sure they look like picture number one they you know when they walk they look straight you know their back is straight their shoulders are not hunched you know they will look tall but for someone who is not well who is sick i don't think they can walk straight they can you know uh, they will slump a bit they jadi macam bongkok jadi macam you know jalan tak tegak right and when you look at them you can tell that they are sick because they will they will look somewhat smaller so small and tall right the first thing that we can say about small and tall is tall describes the grandma when she was healthy and small is to describe the grandma when she was not healthy now let's look at the second explanation about small and tall in stanza one the persona was three years old and as we learned earlier in stanza one the grandmother's back was straight and she was still healthy okay all right so if the persona sits with the grandmother right 
the grandmother would look tall to the persona. Even if, let's say, the grandmother's back was not straight. Okay, alright. Three years old. Can you imagine how tall a three years old is? Right? So, let's say a three years old kid sits next to you. Who is taller? Obviously, you and I and grandma will be taller than the persona. So, the persona look at the grandmother as someone taller than her. So, that's why in stanza 1, the persona says, right, the persona says, my small grandmother is tall there. Because comparing uh, himself or herself, you know, when he or she was 3 years old, and the grandma, the grandma look tall. In stanza 2, which is a few years later after the photograph was taken, we can assume that the persona was probably in his or her early teen. Okay, early teen is around 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. Why would I say that the persona is around that age? Because if we look at the poem, the words being used are not are not that difficult. They are simple words. And normally simpler words are used for young people, used by young people. So look here, right? A few years later. So now the persona who was three years old in stanza one now is let's say 18, 15, 16 years old, right? So, and now, after a few years, the grandmother is now, you know, sick and her back became round and hunched. So, if we were to put the persona next to the grandmother, the grandmother would look small to the persona, right? Let's say you sit next to someone with hunched back. Which one is taller now? Are you or the hunchback person? Obviously, you will be taller. So, if you are taller, meaning the person with hunchback is small. So, that's why in stanza 2, my tall grandmother became small. Now, we will talk about racial difference. Okay, perbezaan bangsa di dalam poem ini. Right. We know that the persona and the grandmother are from different races. Right. One person has white skin while the other person has black skin. Well, we established that earlier. So, the question is, who is black and who is white? Well, actually... Grandma or the persona, both can be white and both can be black. Confusing, isn't it? Let's see, right? Grandmother is white, the persona is black. This is possible. Why? If we look at the background of the poet, Jackie K. Jackie K is black, right? And her grandma is white. So, it is possible that the poet wrote about herself but it's not necessarily the only answer because let's look at another possibility right grandmother is black while the persona is white hmm how is that we look at the two lines in the poem right her big hand holds mine and what is the next line white hand in black hand so now you take your hand and you try to hold somebody's hand. Whose hand is inside? Right? So in the poem, it says, white hand in black hand. So whoever is holding must be outside. The one, the hand that being held must be inside. Okay? White hand in black hand. So 
the grandma who was holding the persona's hand must be black. Hmm. So which one is correct? Well, for the purpose of this poem, actually, my dear readers, sorry, dear readers, my dear audience, who is black or who is white doesn't really matter. So what actually matters? It is because this poem actually wants to highlight the close and intimate relationship between different races. That's what actually important. Right? It tells us that if you are black and your family member is white, you can still love each other. All right? So, what are the possible reasons of the racial difference? So, the racial difference can be from, number one, interracial marriage. Okay, mixed marriage, perkahwinan campur, right? Perkahwinan antara bangsa yang berbeza, right? Most probably the grandma, right? The grandma doesn't matter she is white or she is black. She married the opposite gen, uh, the opposite race, right? Uh, another reason for this racial difference, uh, this one we can look at Jackie K's background. Jackie K was adopted, okay? Uh, dia diambil sebagai uh, anak angkat. Alright? Jadi, this is another reason for racial difference. Whew! That was a long explanation, isn't it? So, now we finally come to the, the overall summary. We can make two final summary here. The first one is, this poem is about appreciation towards our elders. Bagaimana kita menghargai orang-orang uh, yang lebih tua, terutamanya especially our family. The next one is it also highlights about interracial relationship in a family. So basically it tells us that despite your race, right, you still love each other. So, what are the lessons that can be learned from this poem? The first lesson is, we should always appreciate our elders. Next, we should treasure our loved ones. And the last one is, we should love our family and friends despite the difference in age or race. Oh, hey, before we finish, if you like the content of this video and my previous videos, please subscribe to my channel and share my videos with others. Yes, feel free to share uh, my videos on SPM poems. Please also leave positive comments in the comment section. It's not much, but it really means a lot for me. You know, as a motivation uh, factor. You may also suggest what other videos I should make for you next. Well, folks, that's all. That's all for this video. All the best for your SPM. See you later. Bye.